Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how the Miami Heat have managed to turn around their team and overturn their roster and put themselves in position to potentially be the next great NBA super team in 2021. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA then consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day. Okay, so before we get into the future for the Miami Heat, let's talk about how they got where they are. So a couple of years ago in 2016-17 season, they weren't in a very good place at all. They didn't have Dwayne Wade. They didn't have Chris Bosh anymore. Obviously, LeBron James had been gone for a few seasons, and they started off that year at 11-30. and 30. So they looked like a team that was going to hit the reset button. They lost all these stars. They'd had a great run with the Heatles, and now they were paying the price. And we've seen that with a couple of different teams. When you have this, this huge run of success and you make some sacrifices financially in terms of future draft picks and things like that to keep that run of success going, sometimes the bill ends up coming do and you have to you know lose for a couple more seasons to recoup your assets and then build your team back up and it seemed like that's where they were like i said no way no bosh no lebron and then all of a sudden they just figured it out they had this weird mix of uh, of players that nobody really wanted that much like Dion waiters and and james johnson and they had some younger players like justice winslow step up where on goran dragic was good and suddenly they went from 11 and 30 to a 500 record by the end of the season. And what that caused them to do was say, hey, we've got a pretty good core here. We went on this crazy run in the second half of the season when you look at their record after going down to 11 and 30. And so they doubled down on a lot of the players on their roster. Guys like Hassan Whiteside, James Johnson, Deion Waiters. They felt like they had a really good core together of at least a competitive team. And that was important to them, again, with losing all of the big three from the Heatles era, they wanted to continue to stay competitive, specifically Pat Riley because he's getting older. He doesn't want to just oversee a really, really bad team. He wants to continue to push the envelope and push for a championship. The problem was that group never found the same kind of success. They brought in new players like Bam Adebayo to try and rejuvenate them and continue to add talent, but it just it just never came together the same way. The following year, they got the sixth seed in the East. They ended up with 44 wins, which was a solid season and probably right around what Riley was expecting and hoping for. And then last season, they had a lot of injuries and ended up missing the playoffs. And it just didn't really seem like there was a lot of direction for this team, at least in terms of being a top tier competitive team in the Eastern Conference. They had some nice pieces like Bam and Justice Winslow and Josh Richardson, but the biggest issue quickly was becoming their payroll. They had the most expensive roster in the entire NBA last season when, like I said, they didn't even end up making the playoffs. So clearly they were in a bad spot. And at the time going into last summer, I didn't really see an easy way out for them considering all the, the contracts and the huge payroll and not having a ton of young talent. They had some good players, but not necessarily any all-star caliber guys, or at least that's what I and many other people thought at the time. But then the summer rolls around and they get themselves in a situation where Jimmy Butler really wants to come to Miami. So they flip him for Josh Richardson and suddenly their ceiling is raised a little bit more. And then they make this Justice Winslow trade in the middle of this season and suddenly you can start to see what the plan is here for Miami. Very, very clearly, they're setting themselves up to be huge, huge players in the summer of 2021. They're going to have Bam and Abayo. They're going to have Jimmy Butler. They're going to have a ton of cap space. They're gonna have Miami. They're gonna have Pat Riley, who notoriously is one of the best free agency recruiters in the entire league. It's not just the Heatle stuff. Players like Gordon Hayward have, be, have come very, very close to joining Miami in the past just as a result of their ability to bring in players. There's a lot of advantages there in terms of living in the state of Florida, living in Miami, being around Pat Riley. They have the organizational structure. They have a great coach. You know that you're gonna win games if you're a star and you go to Miami. And that is clearly their path towards becoming a true contender and a super team as we move towards 2021. Now, as we move into the actual math and the logistics here of the summer of 2021, it is actually possible now as a result of some of the recent trades for the Heat to keep Jimmy Butler, keep Bam Adebayo, and bring in two full max contract players in the summer of 2021 if they want to. And that is a summer in which there are going to be a ton of free agents available because a lot of the players that just signed this past off season, like Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, left opt-outs for that season. And there are a ton of other big names as well. The biggest one obviously being Giannis Antetokounmpo. So let's get into the actual math and the logistics here. So currently the projection for the salary cap for the summer 2021 is right around $125 million. Going into that summer, as of right now, the Heat are sitting at around 63 and a half, 64 right now because of Jimmy Butler's 
contract, the Andre Godala team option, assuming that they accept it, and then guys like uh, Tyler Hero, and then a couple of other end of the bench guys as well that are worth like one to two million dollars. So that's where they're at right now. And that's a significant number because for them to outright sign a max contract player away from another team in free agency, they need at least 25% of the salary cap. So if they want to bring in two max contract guys, they need to have at least 50% of the salary cap available going into the summer 2021 if they want to keep Bam and Jimmy Butler and some of their other players on the roster, which I will get to later. So right around that half of the salary cap of 125 million is like 62 and a half. So they're basically there, they're within shouting distance, but there's a problem here. Bam Adebayo has developed into an all-star caliber player this season and is really, really good and, and a, really a perfect, you know, third or fourth guy in a potential super team situation because he does so much defensively, he's so active and he provides great energy to the group. And ideally in this situation, you don't want to lose him. So that part isn't the problem. It's the fact that he's going to need a new contract extension in the summer of 2021. Now, as you look at their payroll, you might be thinking, well, they can just sign their two max contract guys and then re-sign Bam to go over the cap. That's not how it works. You can't just leave your guys hanging out there and not sign them and then sign two guys and then bring them back. The reason that it doesn't work that way is because the NBA doesn't want this to be a situation where you can just have all these expiring contracts in one season, re-sign, you know, three max contract guys and then re-sign a whole bunch of players by going over the salary cap. So what you have to do is have a cap hold on your payroll to retain the ability to sign someone like Bam, Bam Adebayo and go over the salary cap at the same time. To retain his bird rights, aka the, the ability to go over the salary cap, to re-sign him, you have to have a cap hold on your roster for him. And for Bam, in this situation, it's between 250 to 300% of his final year of his rookie deal, which is right around $5 million. So that puts him in the range of about 12 and a half to $15 million on their 2021, their summer of 2021 payroll of a cap hold so that they can retain him. Now, that's honestly not a huge deal because they can just go and decline Andre Godala's team option, and then that basically is a wash, and they'll still have their 50% to bring in their two max contracts. But that's not necessarily their only option here. Depending on the situation that develops in that summer, they could either just let Bam walk, which is very, very unlikely. They could use him in a sign-in trade for one of the max contract players that they're bringing in, similar to like a D'Angelo Russell type situation. They could just sign one max contract player alongside Jimmy Butler and sign Bam to whatever extension they feel like, or the option that I just gave in which they have the cap hold of the roster, they turn down Iggy's option, they bring in two max contract guys, and then they re-sign Bay. Now, technically, they would just kind of be within shouting distance of the two max contract slots at that point, but they can move around a couple of the lower end contracts on their roster in that summer to make some space, and it's definitely doable, which is honestly pretty incredible given the payroll situation they were in just a few years ago. Obviously, a lot of those contracts have run out by now, but it's still, I mean, to have one of the most expensive rosters in the league just a few seasons ago and go into the summer of 2020 with potentially one max player on the roster, Jimmy Butler, and two more slots and the ability to bring back someone like Bam Adebayo, that would be a very, very scary team. Now, obviously, the big fish in the pond in summer of 2021 is Giannis Antetokounmpo. And I'm honestly not even anticipating him being a part of this free agency class because this summer, if he gets a super max extension offer from the Bucks, that's the first time they, that they can offer it is this summer. I wouldn't be surprised if he just go ahead and if he just goes ahead and takes it. It's a quarter of a billion dollars over five years. Presumably they just made the finals. They might've even won the championship. I don't even think that he's going to be a 2021 free agent in general, but there are other guys certainly in this group that they could bring in potentially Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Oladipo, whatever. There's a ton of guys in that summer of 2021. The only lingering question for me in terms of this plan actually working is the Jimmy Butler aspect of this and how much guys actually want to play with him. Now, presumably there were a couple of different scenarios this past summer in which Butler could have teamed up with someone like Kawhi or like Paul George or whoever, and that could have been an option. So it seems like people do want to play with him, but with him getting older, I would slightly question the fit there in terms of him alongside two other max contract players. But honestly, I think that's their only roadblock because people are gonna believe in Miami as an organization. They believe in Pat Riley, Eric Spolster as a championship winning coach, and they have all of the benefits of living in Miami and living in the state of Florida that they're going to use their advantage. And as I said in the beginning, a notoriously good recruiting pitch as well from Pat Riley and from the Miami Heat. So they could very easily, from a payroll 
payroll standpoint, set themselves up to have three max contract players and Bam, who's going to be highly paid as well, and then just kind of fill everything else out around the edges. And it could be the Heatles 2.0, but a little bit better from a uh, an overall team standpoint because you have guys like Bam that are going to work a little bit more like those Golden State Warriors teams with KD when you have four legitimate guys as opposed to just three. And then maybe Pat Riley will get the championship that he has definitely been seeking over the last handful of seasons. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.